I'm Caroline from Lark Couture and today we are going to do a video about making a gargoyle. We being me and the person who actually knows how to do all this stuff, Doria, who you will meet in a second. Um, and yeah, that's it. Have fun guys! So we've successfully put on the ears and the horns. Um, we're going to have to, they're a little bit larger than her ears, so we're just going to blend up into them, um, which is something you can do if they don't quite fit your subject, which is fine. Uh, or you can cut them down, but we've, we're going to try and leave them on so we can use them later on the date. Now what I'm going to be using next is matte gel medium. It's an artist supply thing, and I kind of just use what I have in my house uh, for the project that I need it in, and sometimes I find these really weird things that you know, no one would think to use, but you know, it works. So <laughs> I'm using this for now. I'm going to create some uh, cheekbones, which she has some lovely cheekbones. We're just going to make them a little bit higher. And a good thing to do is have two, two applicators. This is just for the mass amount, and this is to kind of like buff away. And I'm going to be using my fingers a lot too. I like using my fingers as opposed to other tools because I can really feel what's going on a little bit better. So. You just kind of want to smooth into the skin with your fingers so you can have a. so it's not so clumpy. Kind of create kind of like an angular jawline for her. Again, I'm just kind of blending out. And then I'll blend in towards the center in a minute. And it's okay if this is a little clumpy because we're trying to emulate stone. So that actually is going to work well in our favor. And then after you're done, you can brush this with some acrylic paint or some face paint to kind of smooth out the edges. And actually the texture is probably going to be nice because we have a lot of texture going on in the horns. Um, and we can create more texture in the ears if we so choose. I'll see what it looks like when we get there.
and you can play with this all day long. It's never gonna be perfect, but the imperfections I think we're gonna actually render well. Okay. Alright, we're just gonna take a quick break while everything dries, and then we're gonna go ahead and start with the rest of the face, face paint. Alright, and we're back. We've kind of let these areas um, cool down a little bit. They're a little tacky still, but not bad. As uh, you can kind of see, you can kind of press into it a little bit, so it's very flesh like. Um, as time goes on, these will get harder a little more crusty. Um, so yeah, she's been really great with her expressions. She hasn't smiled or sneezed or anything crazy yet. So they're holding up really well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend the gray that's in the horns out into the rest of the skin. Have a little bit lighter here and then kind of contour a darker color um, through the cheekbones to kind of give it a, a really kind of gouged out look. I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite face paints. These are actually made by a Guinness Book of World Record, record <laughs> face painter. They're called Snazaroo. You can get them at snazaroo.com. Um, and they're really hypoallergenic free, safe on kids and babies. You can eat the whole thing and be fine. So they're my favorite. Nom nom nom. <laughs> I'm kind of just going to mix them on this thing. Um, I usually don't mix directly onto the thing, but we're just doing it now for speed and I'm going to fix it later. You can kind of test it on your skin to kind of see what color you're getting. So I'm mixing the black and white together. Start on her forehead. I'm kind of going over the spot where there was um, the flesh tone. I'm just kind of blending it into the prosthetic kind of cover the prosthetic. You're still going to see it a little bit, but not quite as much. And it's okay if it's kind of like a mottled color. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a very breathable face paint. You can do your whole face in it and you won't break out or anything. Um, pretty good product. Already we're getting, getting there with the color. You don't really need a whole lot of um, additional paint. I'm going to do some detailing once all this is set, but more or less I just want kind of a solid base color. I'm going to go into her eyeballs a little bit. I'm painting over her eyebrows and we'll figure out what to do with those after. Just uh, water. Water and paint. And I really don't want to get into the, the cheeks too much yet because they're still drying um, and I don't want to mess them up, but I'm going to just blend the edges of them in as we work. Now, if you use any water, you want to use the least amount because um, you want it to be opaque enough and not too watered down.
And a lot of this is just feel. There's no real right and wrong way to do it. But I am going to start adding more dark underneath the cheek area that I've created to give it more depth looking. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and detail the ears to make sure that we're having some kind of definition in the shape. Let's kind of just go with whatever is there. Just kind of outlining it a little bit, actually. Be careful when you go into your cheekbone area that you're not actually disturbing it too much. If we had more time, I'd have let it dry all the way first, but that's okay. You can go in and kind of soften up some things if you want. Birds have been pooping on me for a thousand years. <laughs> and we're done. Thanks Yay, for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Doria. No problem. Thanks for this wonderful model we have with a gorgeous idea that you know, she chose. And we'll be doing more, hopefully, in the near future. Have fun, Bye. guys. <laughs>